Hey folks, this is Vagrant. Welcome to our next brand new playthrough. Today we're going to get started with Disco Elysium. This is a really interesting RPG game. Came out a few years ago. I've wanted to play it for absolutely ages. Um, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know too much about it. I just know that it's very, very open-ended in terms of how you build your character and how you treat the world and stuff. That there's a bit of a political slant to it and a moral slant to it and a psychology slant to it and all this kind of stuff. Uh, it looks absolutely beautiful. Um, overwhelmingly positive reviews, you know, everyone says it's one of the best RPG games ever made, so really excited about all that, and uh, that's about it, so let's dig in. Oh no, I have, to, <laughs> I have to do things already. Okay, so we've got some archetypes for our character, who I believe, by the way, is like a detective, uh, like a police detective. Continue, so we've got Thinker, extremely intelligent, but very bad with people, knows interesting facts, comes up with interesting ideas, and look, we have a little perk here called Encyclopedia. But fizz, as in our psyche, so we can't really influence other people. Okay, so let's have a look at these four these four stat things first of all. This is, I think, going to be quite a slow play paced playthrough, but I'm, I'm pretty down for that. So we've got intelligence, and each stat is split into subcategories. So intellect, your capacity to reason. So we've got logic, encyclopedia, which obviously we got over there. Rhetoric, your speaking ability, essentially. Drama, conceptualization, and visual calculus. If those stats don't tell you what kind of game this is, then. <laughs> uh, we've got Psyche, so Volition, Inland Empire, Empathy, Authority, Suggestion, and Esprit de corps. <laughs> we've got Physique, how well your body is built. We've got Physical Instruments, Electrochemistry, Endurance, Half Light, Pain Threshold, and Shivers. And finally, we have Motorix, how well you move your body, hand-eye coordination, perception, reaction speed, savoir-foir, interfacing, and composure. Okay, so the thinker, intelligent, but bad with people. Sensitive, very psychological. Big on the, the psyche, as you can see. Unstable, might begin to lose his mind. <laughs> physical, extremely physical, interacts with the world through his body, gets things done, but dumb as a rock. Okay, let me, let's see what we can do with creating our own. Oh my god. Okay, they're all terrible. <laughs> okay, so I guess we want to think... What, what? I mean, it could go very all over average, but that seems a little bit boring. I'm thinking twos and fours to spice things up a little bit more. So we've got some definitions here. Intellect, raw brain power, how smart you are. Psyche, sensitivity, how emotionally intelligent you are. Physique, how strong you are. Motorics, your senses, how agile you are. Well, I'm not very agile, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop that down to two. But I am pretty hench these days, so I'm going to give myself four physique. And I would suggest I have more intelligence than I do emotional intelligence. I'm going to base it a little bit off myself, and I think there's a lot of choices to make in games like this, and I'll do what I usually do in games like this, in that choices I make will be the choices that I would make myself in real life. I think that's good. I'm smart, I'm strong, but... I'm a bit of a rock, and I am emotionally an idiot. No, that, that works. <laughs> Let's go, next. Do I get to choose, like, a, a thing? Set skill. What? Oh, we get to pick one. Okay, well... <clears throat> Let's have a look. A signature skill. So, I guess, I mean, the chances are we want to focus on the ones... Which are, um, in... Physique or motor or intellect, but we'll, we'll go through them all. Uh, info. Oh, oh, lots of text. Wield raw intellectual power to juice the world. It does sound very useful for a detective, right? Yeah, you can solve intellectual puzzles. You will be very proud and thus susceptible to intellectual brave uh, flattery. Yeah. Those blinded by their own brilliance often miss important clues. That's interesting. Okay, so that's for analysts. Encyclopedia, call upon all your knowledge, produce fascinating trivia. That sounds less useful. Practice the... Well, I'm, I might just pick what I think I would be good at. And kind of go in that direction for the entire thing. Rhetoric. Practice the art of persuasion. Enjoy rigorous intellectual discourse. I think I would probably... Give myself rhetoric over Encyclopedia and Logic, so that's winning so far. Play the actor, lie and detect lies. Conceptualization, understand creativity, see art in the world, and visual calculus, reconstruct crime scenes, make laws of physics work for the law. Okay. We'll read these, although I'm not going to pick any psyche ones. 
Um, Volition holds yourself together, keep your morale up. Boo. Inland Empire, hunches and gut feelings, dreams in waking life. Empathy, understand others, work your mirror neurons. Authority, intimidate the public, assert yourself, no thank you. Espirit de go. <laughs> Connect to Station 41, understand, understand cop culture. Suggestion, charm men and women, play the puppet master. Endurance, take the blows, don't let the world kill you. Shrug off the pain, don't have to hurt you more for pain thresholds. Flex powerful muscles, enjoy healthy organs. All a bit boring, this physique ones. Go to party planet, love and be loved by drugs. Getting more interesting. <laughs> Shivers, raise the hair on your neck, tune into the city. Half light, let the body take control, threaten people. I'm not a very aggressive guy, it must be said. Hand eye coordination, ready, aim of fire, perception, see here and smell everything, let no detail go unnoticed, reaction speed, the quickest to react, an untouchable man. Savoir foi, sneak under their noses, stun with immense panache. Interfacing, master machines, pick locks and pockets, and composure, straighten your back, keep your poker face. I am going to go for rhetoric, because it's in intellect, and I used to be on the debate team and all that kind of jazz. It looks like we'll be able to put more points. Oh, wait, it's interesting though. You can, the rest of it goes up to five. Some of these only go up to. Oh, no, right, okay. I think it's maxed. See, they go to four. They go up to two. They go up to two. Yeah, it's based on your, your skill. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay. <clears throat> Six minutes in. <laughs> The Furies are at home in the mirror. It is their address. Even the clearest water, if deep enough, can drown. So, I know this game used to have tons of reading, but I believe that in the um, this version, the final cut, which is the version I'm playing, every single thing in the game is now voice acted. There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious for men, in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Okay. Ever. Oh. You don't even know my real name. I'm the fucking Lizard King. <laughs> Never. Ever. Okay. <laughs> well, I... Well, I no. Never, ever, ever. Never, ever, ever, baby. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> There's nothing only warm primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No longer than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. An inordinate amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. This is great. Give me some more. What was that about the ex something? An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle. Soaking in some lurid acidic sauce, it's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. Is this me? My my soul, my consciousness coming into existence for the very first time? Am I inside my mother right now? That's a new sentence for me. Ex love, ex tenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you've suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay, sail with me through the abyss of pelagic zone. Abyssal pelagic. I don't know that word off the top of my head. I'm assuming by abyssal and pelagic it's. The deep abyss of the ocean, essentially, right? And so sort of sail. Yeah. No, I want to get off. I I was tempted by the Alonzi. That's the Doctor Who nerd in me. But I want to get off now. I like pain and burning light and wanting things from people who don't want to give them to me. Do you really? <laughs> <laughs> I do. You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why do you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Poured so much on yourself, got a bit carried away, did we, Chef? 
Okay, so I think I was... I think... I I, I know what I said before, but it, it did read a little bit weird about the ex-wives and the path love and stuff like that. I'm assuming what's actually going on is that I'm utterly hammered. <laughs> Fear and apprehension. Oh. You should ask what's out there first. Did this to myself? Yes. Your one disco mother. Tell me, what's waiting for me? There's this giant ball there. An evil apes. And the evil apes are juking it out on the ball. You're one of them. It's basically all just evil apes juking it out on a giant ball. Infinitely small. <laughs> you can't even make out it's a ball when you're juking it out. It's that large. Okay. Time for resources. It's just a stupid expression you picked up somewhere. The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face. Or you lose. I feel like the limbic system voice actor is really trying to put on the limbic system voice. Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meat around you. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscious sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert. Hurting. Longing. Dancing to disco music. Mother, help me. There's a head attached to my neck and I'm in it. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth. And with it, <laughs> an ungodly headache. <laughs> help someone cut my head off. It's trying to murder the rest of me. I felt like that all too often lately. Not because of the alcohol, unfortunately. A fiery streak penetrates your skull. Trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound. A clarion call from hell. Somehow, you know what it is. A Capri's to name a motor carriage. It was indeed hammered. Oh, and not quite naked, but verging. Okay. Let's go Elysium. Day one. What did he put in there? Okay. The character sheet. It's like a proper little RPG. I can level up eventually. That's cool. There's a bag. There's like a detective thing by the looks of it. Maybe a, a person identifier. I've got hands. I've got a face. I've got health. And I've got morale. Let's uh, have a poke around, I guess. This magnum-sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. Oh, well, well, I think we know where it is. Looks like someone tore out the tape. Ooh, while well, the song was playing. Hold tab to highlight. Oh, okay. It's handy. This reel-to-reel -reel tape player is still on. Rolling empty. It does look like it was a, a little bit of a bender. I will take the single shoe. <laughs> Green shoe, left foot. Okay, so now we've got an inventory. Oh, yeah, looking sexy. All right, good. You don't need two shoes, it's overrated. I've got pants, I've got a shoe. I'm ready to hit the world. Wait, there's a tie there. How do I... What's this? Oh, you hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. Good job, Perception. It says, whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. Good job, Perception. It's a tie, but this is spinning, and that scares me slightly. Can I turn it off? This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. I think we're gonna, we're gonna stop the fan the first. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. There we go. 
<laughs> Just think it. You never know, folks. You never know. Make out the fan. The type, please. I don't know if I had to reload that whole thing. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan. Okay. The other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself so, to so, one of the So it is like a proper little paper RPG, you know, like Dungeons & Dragons or something like that. You can see that my savoir foire, savoir foire is only level 1, but it's an easy check ish. It was like a level 10 check, medium. But I get plus 3 bonus because the fan is turned off. And it's a white check, which means I can retry it. You swoop up and catch the tie. Nice. Snap. It's released from the blade. What you have in your hand is a truly hideous time <laughs> with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. Oh, that's lovely. Am I, am I wearing it already? Yeah, I'm looking sexy. Okay. Next step, clothing. You know what? We're looking okay. Got my disco blazer on. Am I wearing a shirt? I don't think so. <laughs> Let's see if we can do something about that. There we go, there's a shirt. White satin shirt, check myself in the mirror. The mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a first discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. This man has a lovely voice. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Okay, do I want to see myself in this situation? I don't know, I'm, I'm clearly a little bit... Ah, no, self-awareness is an important thing. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Mm. Abort, you clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Okay, well, I mean, I said I was going to do... I was going to follow my intuition, and it is to keep going. Behold. I don't look that bad. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? It's Phage of... I'm, I'm self-aware. Oh, my God. Oh, no. My face has actually come into a clear picture from the bottom left. Too late. You clearly have rigor mortis on your face. Oh, wait. Is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? The face is just doing it. I don't control it. Please stop. It's horrible. <laughs> You're scaring yourself. <laughs> oh my god. You can't stop. It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? <laughs> Okay, superstardom, obviously. God, I don't know, it's indescribable. I think it's supposed to look suggestive. I'm afraid it's meant for the ladies. I mean, simulating that I'm vaguely sympathetic, I think I'm sort of pulling it off too in a sad has-been kind of way. Expression of pain. You are correct. Oh. So what just happened? Oh, I can... Very low, Jesus. Okay, so I can... I've only got a low chance. My encyclopedia's... I mean, encyclopedia's decent as well. I'm surprised it's so low. Formidable 13. Dig deep into your mind to locate the source of the expression. Let's give it a go. You never know. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. Can I clean myself up a little bit? I do, I do look a little, a little disturbed, it must be said. But hey, I've got clothes on. <laughs> what more do you need? What more do you need from me? Honestly, people these days ask for so much. I'm not naked. I've got two shoes. Wait, I've got one shoe. Uh, is there another shoe somewhere? The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. Let's assess the damage. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. 
Did I break it with my own hands? A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. What did this say? More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. Sounds like a bottle to the me. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. <laughs> I don't need it. I don't need anyone. Don't move your nonsense. I'm gonna go get the shoe. Cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. Did I get my shoe? Okay, so what's going on here? Seems like your green snake since shoe is missing its partner. You should find it before you go venturing into the wild unknown. Two shoes are better than one. Unite them again. I've got a map. Show some interesting things there. So, where's this door? The balcony. Is it down here? What is that? That's oh, sweet. Steal people's money, that's fine. Um, I'm not sure this is how you get to the balcony. I just want to figure out how you get to the balcony. The window stands broken and it's the morning light hurts your eyes. It's hazy. But you see the ocean and some war-torn buildings. It must be, right? There must be another way around that I'm not seeing. What is this over here? What are you? What are you? You're a door, but you don't go anywhere. Okay, I'm, pre I'm, pre I'm pretty confident there's nothing else in this room, so <laughs> let's uh, head out. It's temporarily one shoe, you know, temporarily. It's a calendar. Hello, officer. Hello. woman. <laughs> It's March 1951. Sweet. Hello. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Are we in... Netherlands? Officer and my military personnel, turn your bloated face away from her beauty and keep on walking. Well, neither seems like a good option. One of them is just walking away. And one of them is... Uh, her knowing that I don't know what the hell's going on. Uh, no. <laughs> Why'd you call me officer? Because you're a police officer, sir. You sure? I am, yes. Unless you've been feeding us a set of very well rehearsed lies all this time. She takes another drag. You've been here for three days on official police business, no less. More businesses than Couldn't that. say. In truth, so far. Mostly drinking. <laughs> well, my suggestion is very, very bad. I don't think we're going to be trying that one. Because I suspect there may be repercussions for trying stupid things. And the expression, as we can see in the bottom left, is... Eh, it needs some work. Well, I don't remember being a cop or anything else. Could it be because of the drinking? She raises an eyebrow. The cigarette sizzles. Mm. Of course. Be careful, officer. They don't like the police around here. I figure the more I say, the stupider I'm going to become. <laughs> she looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. Goodbye. Goodbye. Farewell. I'll be the same. <laughs> okay, got a little, got a little run on that. Oh, I, can, I forgot that I can sprint. Maybe this is how I get to the balcony. Oh, someone's gone gone. Ah, here we go. The world is looking uh, funky, to say the least. What is this around my head? Ah. My shoe! My beloved shoe! A gust of briny wind washes over There you. they both are. Two identical shoes. Both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin. Reunited on your feet. Nice. Like two baby crocodiles. <laughs> Yeah, totally normal thing to think. These do not look like normal cop shoes. It's pretty clear a normal cop is not what you are. Fair point. Good. They're balanced. Comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now 
truth be told. Okay. Well, nothing disastrous has happened so far. I can only take that as a positive. Where are we? We're staying in the whirling... Whirling in something. There's a human. Hello, human. Got long, glorious 50s hair. Which I've always wanted, but not something I could ever really pull off myself. You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray. Light it up and smoke the living shit out of it. So whenever this pops up, you see it's, it's, it's headed up by... For example, now, electrochemistry or something else. And I think it's just essentially different aspects of my brain picking up on various things that they want to do. I'm not a smoker, however. So, no. If I'm not a smoker, my man's not a smoker. <laughs> Much like in real life. Am I going to knock on this door? I don't think the so. The door is closed. I'm going to leave. It seems like a bad idea. Uh, right, we've got a thing over here. This is the weekend edition of the satirical newspaper, Tron Le Mans. En Francais? Could be French. Oh god, there's so many people. Wait, where am I? Okay, so I'm here on police business, been here for three days, seemingly hammered out my mind. <laughs> This is where the lyrics would be. A big old karaoke mic just waiting for someone to sing into it. The speaker is connected to the radio, the music is seasoned with static. You should totally sing karaoke here. The first <laughs> chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. My soul is immense. My soul is modest. My soul is modest. Exactly. It's measured, level-headed, and it needs to be heard. You do make a good point, Inland Empire. You it's do make a good point. <laughs> By other people. <laughs> Whether they like it or not. Ram it up their ears, says your adrenaline gland. Violently express yourself. Okay, what am I going to sing? You have not yet stumbled on the right lamentation, but it's out there. It'll come to you. You will wreak havoc with it. Don't worry. Would I want to sing a lament, which is like a sad, mournful tune, or would I want to sing something happy? What would I sing? Let me think about it. I'm drunk. I'm singing in a PA system. I'm not sure I'm going to do it, because again, I don't know if this is something I would do. Um, yeah, maybe. And I froze of a particularly rough hangover. Probably something happy, though. No, no. Don't sing the happy song. It's stupid. Sing the sad song. It's profound. Hmm. You have to find something tragic to sing first, though. What should I sing? Oh, wait, wait, I don't know. Okay, I actually have a task to sing karaoke, apparently. I need a sad song on tape. You need to find a sufficiently tragic tape, then play it on a boombox to memorise the lyrics, then ask the cafeteria manager to perform, preferably in the evening. Wow, okay. What have you got there? I thought it was an octopus. Um, it appears to be a bird. A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now he's purposely ignoring you. I'm just gonna look at your bird, mate. A competent work of taxidermy, the white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs, one of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. This is the great skewer. The seabird is the symbol for the discovery of the Insulindian Isola, the part of the world you are in right now. Encyclopedia, medium success, good stuff. This is a great skewer. The seabird is the symbol for the discovery of this Insulindian Isola. Is that a real place? <laughs> okay, what happened to the bird? Can I help you with that? Let's let's try to be helpful. Look, your buddy is over there. Oh. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? What do you mean, my buddy? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird in a competent work. Looks like the, this is the great skewer, the seabird. Look. Your oh, right, all right, I get it. Talk to him. Okay. <laughs> I get it, I get it. Big old meanie. 
Menu's been wiped clean, only the word Monday's written on it. A woman's hand wrote yesterday's menu. Today starts in a man's handwriting. Alright, maybe that's important somehow? I don't know, just keep it in mind. This is a water cooler. A large bubble is rising to the surface. Take hey, horses. No safed. Oh, it's like a healing item. Nice. A soft purr of an electric juicer comes from the kitchen. Someone is working. Can I go in? The door is bolted. A sign reads, kitchen reserved for personnel until 1pm. Okay, noted. A sign reads, mess hall reserved for union members. Doors open 4pm. Do I need like a note sheet? This royal pinball machine is unplugged. Never allowed any of them. Hello. Hello, sweetie. Ah, oh. <gasps> there's a cryptozoologist. Oh, this game just gets me. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. Okay, but but are you, I mean, where's the crypt? I just want to talk to a cryptozoologist. Nothing else matters anymore. Bottle of rum has been knocked over. Beautiful dark. No, <laughs> we need to contain the alcoholism. Okay. Summer door closed for the winter. Fair enough. All right, let's just check in with Junkie over here. Ooh. That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? Not now. Oh, excuse me. Do you have something better to do than lust for sweet syrupy rum and lemonade? With a twist of lemon? Maybe lime. Maybe who cares? Just rum? I can see a world where you play this as a raging alcoholic, but it's not for me. Not this time, anyway. A man is sleeping at the table, wearing mud-caked boots and rolled-down overalls. The back of his shirt reads a wild pines, encircled by a logo on with a tree. Counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. I could try to wake him up. Why do I want to wake him up? Let's wake him up. You gently shake his shoulder, oh. but nothing happens. This man could probably sleep soundly in a ship's engine room. I mean, I would not steal the pills from the random man, so <laughs> that means my character is not going to steal the pills from the random man. I guess. A bespeckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. Hello. I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. <laughs> Invent a name. Let's do it. <laughs> Raphael Ambrosius Gusto. Wow. Uh, uh, I can't believe I failed. 71%. I failed. Ah, oh, very, very good. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit ostentatious. No, it's not. Raphael Ambrosius Gusto <laughs> is one classy name for one classy cop. Say it. I don't want to say it. My name is Raphael Ambrosius Gusto. Yes. Well. <laughs> Kids are ruggies having none of it. Not for a moment does he believe that's your real name. He casts it aside as an intradepartmental joke or a peculiarity he doesn't understand. Well, could have been worse. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? What he means is, he has been trying to meet up with you for two days, but you have been otherwise occupied. Mm. Then we should ask him for a rundown of the area. Get me up to speed. I understand the scene is out back, right? Sure. It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? <laughs> yes, the police. I'm aware I'm a policeman. Uh, I haven't. No, I'm just gonna be, I'm gonna be straight up. Okay. We'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Kitsuragi just seems like he wants to get work done. He's not interested in the drama and the politicking, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dabble in it with him. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? <laughs> no. <laughs> Look, man, you know, yeah, <laughs> don't like dead bodies. So, the body is still in the tree. I didn't want to tamper with the evidence, you know. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. 
<laughs> Wouldn't we all? <laughs> it's one of the worst places to put a body. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. After you, officer. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? I guess so. You mean you don't have a badge? <laughs> I have my badge. I'm a policeman and I have my badge. It wasn't on me, whatever. Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. I'm going to be honest while still trying to present the airs of someone who isn't utterly collapsing into nothingness. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. Who is this sultry last talking to me all of a sudden? Yes. Ah, you seem to be following me. <laughs> uh, tell me about what the case. What do you want to know? Um, why are we on the same case if from different precincts? I'm afraid you and I are pawns in a, a pissing competition. You don't know? I assumed you were in on it. <laughs> you know why I'm in on retrograde amnesia? <laughs> it's just stupidity. We shouldn't waste any more time on it. If you want my take, ask me after we've inspected the victim. Was there anything else you wanted to know about the case? Is it mysterious? No, I got it now. Um, let's let's move on for that. All right, so let me have, let's have a little look. Oh my god, so many. Got to interview the cafe man. Inspect the body. Okay, lots to do. Lots to do. You are priority number one. You with your bloody burp. Can I oh, manually save you? Yeah, cool. The man with the unimpressive beard <laughs> notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Mr. Guard, right? You run this place. Oh. Oh. Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Prison 41. <laughs> I have to say something. <laughs> Do we lean into Raphael Ambrosius Costa? You can't be in between names. I, I'm the harbinger of ruin. What? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. I just want to see what happens if I say that. Now I do. What is this? A joke to you? Is this what you get when you call the police now? Ah. This guy? We've been waiting for a week here. I I feel like, and look, I'm not a police officer, so I can't say for sure. I'm pretty sure if I was, I wouldn't say that, but I would say that, so, you know. Sir, I understand your concern, but we are here to do a job. And for us to do it, I need you to stay calm. Yes, of course. You need to calm down. Harbinger of Ruin and Kizaragi are here to save the day. I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene, but it also took you a while to call us. It was you who placed the call, correct? I'm just going to do a slight edit to the sound, bear with me. And what that usually means, as usual, is bringing everything down a little bit. Actually, UI can stay up, I think. But I just want the voice to be more noticeable. No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Sylvie. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. He looks behind a pile of coasters, finds a slip of paper, and hands it to the lieutenant. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No. I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here, and I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. He probably means this is where you step in and ask your questions. I got this. I am policeman. I'm ready to roll. His face expresses profound doubt <laughs> in your having this. <laughs> ask him about the body's location before asking if he killed him. 
people give up information in the more innocuous questions, which you can later use in the more sinister ones, not vice versa. Okay. Where exactly is the body then? Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. And how do we get there then? That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. Why did Sylvie go away? She went away because none of your business. I believe I'm the police officer. You'll be answering my questions. Don't Thank you very much. I'm telling you you're a cop. <laughs> Am I not a cop? Everything is my business. Okay, you got me. She went away because of the dead body out back. And because I asked for her number. That's why Sylvie went away. I hope you appreciate that. I feel like I need to be writing things down. Like, do I need to keep... I'm gonna... Wait. Alexa, lights on. Okay. I always get slightly embarrassed doing that. I don't have a pen. When was the last time I had a pen? I've never had a pen. Ugh. Who has a pen? It's 2022. Pens have ceased to be relevant. <laughs> Okay, let me just open up my notes. I don't know if it'll be a thing. I don't know how much the game will keep track of things for me, blah, 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 blah. But just in case... Oh, that's from Stray. Um, so, Gart... Here, manages cafes. Not a local... I can't remember where it's from. It's from Garstang or something, which is an area around here, so it's probably not Garstang. Um, asked Sylvie out, right? Sylvie. Uh, Sylvie does not begin with a hashtag. <laughs> Asked Sylvia. There's actually a really interesting thing you can do with this game on Twitch, where you can get it so that um, multiple choices are submitted to a poll, so people can vote on which option they want to pick, basically. I think it sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Asked Sylvia, and that's where she left. Probably also the body, I guess, but probably mainly because um, he asked her out. Alexa, lights off. Alexa, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I wasn't talking... <laughs> Thank you, the lieutenant says. He opens his little notebook at the cover. The number is safely tucked away in a small pocket. Didn't go well. I asked an employee out. She didn't want to come, but felt obliged to. It was a bad idea. Now, what is so goddamn fascinating about that for you? It's got nothing to do with the lynching. Got a bit of a temper. Oh, the lynching. Got a bit of a temper, this lad, doesn't it? This stuff gets on my nerves. I am a feminist. <laughs> I guess I like to be thorough. Everything has something to do with everything. You're damn right it does. Good for you. Uh, was there something else? I'd like to get back to what I was doing. Are you the bartender? No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria <laughs> manager. <laughs> What's the difference? I have three cafeterias I manage. Three. Get over it. What's your problem with me? Why would I have a problem with you? You're a hero, cop. Okay, here's an issue with cops, seemingly. Am I? Or did you ride in, take the body down, solve the murder, and not trash my hostel room? <laughs> I do not appreciate your tone. This is no way to talk to an officer. Oh, it's not. You're right. It's not. Yeah. Nailed it. Right. Shall we finish off with... Let's go with it. I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. I was just asking to an opinion. This is it. He said they hoisted him up on a tree. Who is this they, if he doesn't know? Okay, I didn't actually notice that. <laughs> oh, I need to pay more attention already. Um... Hmm. What was that? Well, that must have been ages ago. Well, hey, my rhetoric's coming again. Before you said they hoisted him up on a tree, who did you mean by they? Oh. People are saying it was the Union dock workers, that it was a lynching. Who is saying that? The locals, the customers, the people who eat here. A lot of dock workers eat here. Sylvie told me everyone knows the dock workers did it. I'm gonna write that down. Did the debardeurs themselves tell her this, or is it a rumor? The bodies? Is that, is that dock workers? I don't really know. You'll have to ask her. I would suppose it's because they have nothing better to do. This <laughs> seems like a terrible reason to lynch somebody, it must be said. You mean the strike? Okay, so the dock workers are on strike. Yes, the strike. 
The man they hanged was a security guard for the harbor company, I hear. A mercenary. The unionisters probably thought they'd send a message. <laughs> did, did you kill him? I'm not asking him if he killed him. It's a terrible question. Although, would I... See, I feel I would do that as a joke, but no. The lieutenant turns the page in the little notebook he's been scribbling in. All right, let me let me guess about this a little bit. So they're on strike. Okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. Let's go. That's good, I think. Not I felt so good. fast. You owe me hundred and thirty real. <laughs> oh, seventeen percent. Uh, what's real? Oh. Excuse me, you owe me a hundred and thirty real. The IIR, or Interisolary Real, is the global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. Wow, you're a genius. Yes, that's right, money. You owe this establishment a hundred and thirty real. <laughs> yep. I, I I already want to replay this game and just pick the most ridiculous option at every available time. Oh, it sounds like a lot of fun. What do I owe this place for? Let's see. Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes to 60 real. Then there's the window you annihilated. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work. So don't try to tell me you didn't. That will be 40 real in damages. And the other 30. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. Actually, more, but we'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the stability and order of Revachon. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And yes, real is still money. I don't like any of these options. What are you, a philosopher? <laughs> Actually, I might be. Money is what grown up people use to pay for things. Things like this hostel room, or or eight bottles of potent blend, and nine <laughs> packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate the help. How much money did I pick up? Why well, I want to keep this mine. There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. What happens now? I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then... Officer, maybe you're better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. <laughs> somewhere else I can stay around you here? You mean somewhere else to run up a huge debt? I don't think so. The union squeezed in most places out of business to fund the strike. You're better off home. I'll see what I can do. I'm sorry I couldn't help more. You should take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car, okay? We have to get this investigation started now. Kitsuraki's a lovely man. Good luck. Hmm. Okay. Call Sylvie using Kim's shortwave to ask whether she made the call. Someone reported a hanging to the RCM. Maybe find out who it was and we shared the new light. You have an idea where to start the call. Anyone? There's a lot to do. Still, a lot to do. What's By the here? way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. Do I have a home? But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. Marvel Hill, why not? Why did you say that? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> Let's ask him. No. But isn't that an expression, not a place? Oh. A saying. Up on Marvel Hill, a great high place. One that is impossible to climb back to. Ah. That doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> That's done me in. <coughs> what I want to do is a second playthrough. I know I've not even played the game yet. I'm 15 minutes in, but I want a bottle of whiskey <laughs> to play through the game again. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that on stream. Could I trace the way back somehow? That's a better you idea. You can try. Now. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. Oh, I've got uh, I've got thoughts. Oh my god, hello. Thought cabinet. Jesus. Uh, what? <laughs> K. 
okay, there's a lot of thoughts that we have to kind of like piece together. I guess as I find addresses, I can maybe fill it in. Okay, this is confusing. Great. Lonesome long way home. Temporary research bonus, plus one encyclopedia. Factual memory returns. Research time, 6.5. Let's rewind. Let's trace your drunken steps back home. Jump across the raised channel, bridge southwest of here, fall over, get up, get off the asphalt in 20 minutes, shuffle your feet through courtyards, scaring little children, go under the great raised motor tract, the A81, until you reach Le Domaine Eminor in North Eminet. In North Jamrock, the streets are frozen this time of year, caked with ice. Walk down Main to Perdition, there's a side alley there and your footprints in the mud. Experience 60 out of 100, skill points... Uh, what does all this mean? Okay, so I'm just thinking about that in the background now, right? That's the idea? Kind of like, you know, where you've got a problem and you let your subconscious kind of deal with it? Oh, hello. Active thoughts alter dialogue options. Substances can be administered during dialogue. Tools are context sensitive. Read books to pass time quicker. Hmm. Explore options are level up to. Ah, okay. So, how close am I to leveling up, by the way? Oh, 60, of course, yeah. Okay, so that's purring away in my head. Uh, should we should we go check this out now? Let's go, buddy. You and me, detective bros. I'm going the wrong way, Anna. Okay. Let's have a poke around. A heap of snow melts in this wheelbarrow. The street sign reads <laughs> "fuck the police." Oh, that's that's cool. Pigs go home. Yeah, they're really not. They're not big on us, are they? You're not gonna like me, are you? The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? You sound surprised. We don't see a lot of police around here. That's all. I have some questions for you. Of course. What can I help you with? She seems a lot nicer than I expected. Um, actually, I, I feel like I need a voice. I mean, like, I have some questions for you. <laughs> no, who are you? Uh, yeah, who are me? you? I am just a gardener. <laughs> Good to meet you, just a gardener. Cool. What are you doing here? I am working. Working on I what? I have a greenhouse in the yard there. I've been trying to get some work done. But... Well, as you probably know, there's a corpse hanging from a tree there. It smells pretty bad, so I have to take breaks. Nah, nobody wants to work anymore. Don't worry, miss. We are here to clean it up. You can get to work soon. Mm-hmm. Thank you. My head is about to explode from all the salts I've had to inhale. Any directions? Of course. Oh. Where to? What's up in the north? There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements. Not a lot, really. The harbour gates, some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store, too. Three T's? That's an excessive number of T's. Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. She's got a little long français. Just coast. There's a little fishing village there and a fish market, but that got closed down ages ago. Rows of stalls under a broad roof where silvery fish were heaped on newspapers. Water, water everywhere, pouring from the heavens in the shadow of the old church. That's beautiful. What kind of fish market is this? I don't know. The abandoned kind? It used to gather every spring, but there's nothing to do there now. Just drug addicts. It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. What do you mean? <laughs> tell me where we are, okay? We're in Martinez, sir. This intersection is called... Roundabout north, I think. And the cops. It's there. In the yard, right through the hole in the fence. Thank you. No problem. Excuse me? Oh. Well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. <clears throat> didn't mean to startle you. Okay. Okay. She seems nice. Of course. I won't hold you back. 
Thank you, gardener. Okay, come on, Kutsuragi. Ooh, a nice vehicle. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that toy from oblivion. The Cupris Kinema motor carriage. I feel like we're... It's obviously we're in the past, right? We're in the 50s or something. And you kind of pick up on that. I mean, look at the vehicle. But it's also got a sort of... It's got like a retro-futuristic sort of aesthetic. Uh, Kitsuragi's clothing in particular definitely has that kind of vibe to me. There are bottles inside. You can pick them up if you had a bag. Okay. Is that a good thing? <laughs> this Postla Vantorie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. <laughs> good mail delivery box. I would do that, yeah. <laughs> who's a good boy? I know, who's a the good girl? seems happy. <laughs> Eat shit pig, fucked by the coon, and sent G with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore and best set mailbox also. <laughs> um. <laughs> Can't get over this game. I feel you, buddy. The mail collection box seems cathartic. Thankfully, even so do you. You shudder, then you swallow, and then suddenly you see it. Over all the other graffitos, someone has, using the tip of a very sharp knife, cut the words Revachol forever. Revachol forever? What is Revachol? Hello, human. This book has a rose, a pistol, and a half naked dame on its cover. Sounds like my kind of book, really. On the cover stands a very muscular man surrounded by flames. Sounds like my kind of book, really. A book about pate. Love pate. This book, you don't really understand what it's about, nor does it seem important. A book about Bo Boadero culture promotes freedom and roaming upstream. A book about the future. A government reads your mind using radio technology. All very true. Hello, human. Small human. Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. A young girl with chubby red cheeks waves at you. <laughs> and now this... Hello. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? Is it okay if I ask you some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. Annette, they're not about goddamn books. What's your name? My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register, or organising the stock. The girl gazes at the window, then suddenly jolts, her eyes wide as if recalling something. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. Why are you out here? I'm signalling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. <laughs> How is this game so funny? <laughs> Maybe it's just my sense of humour, it's just nailed it completely, but it, it absolutely has pinpointed what my sense of humour is, and is uh, very much on point. Such a good trooper you are, already learning the value of hard work. <laughs> I could help. If I'm gonna go for it. Thank you, sir. I'm glad to help Mum out with the store. <laughs> Shouldn't you be at school? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mum keep this place running. <laughs> Isn't school more important? Mum says it's necessary to do both, because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. Mum mm. says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Cursed? Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... <laughs> Bankrupt. Exactly. But we've been doing fine so far. I don't think cursed is real. They shouldn't be, but they seem real. Anyhow, they say that these grounds are doomed for businesses. They're not doomed, but your mother should learn from their mistakes. That's good advice. Of course, sir. Um... What's this crime, crime business? is about murders or burglaries or things like that. And the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch <laughs> the criminals. <laughs> I didn't want to... I need to know what crime is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a puzzle too. You can guess who the criminal is or how the good guys are going to catch him. 
Are you are you laying a little little temptation here, game? You don't look much like a policeman. What does it look like then? Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. Hmm. It's not your body that's important to police work in a way, it's your your head. head. Yes. I like that. No. Your resilience. Huh? Not head, child. Heads. <laughs> Resilience. Okay, so that's pain threshold popping in and thinking, yeah, no, I'm more important, buddy boy. <clears throat> okay, so we can have flexibility. There are millions of different people out there and you have to get into their heads. Sometimes you've got to be the killer to catch the killer. Or grit, a total disregard for personal safety. you got to take the pain. This Mullen guy looks like he'd run to his mom. I ain't got no balls. Flexibility. Isn't that very dangerous? Policemen live and breathe danger, little girl. Mullen obviously loves the chameleonic skin. Unlike you, sir. He's just a fictional character. He's no match for you. She likes me. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. Like in the books. Okay, I've got a chance. You failed to deduce oh, anything substantial. God damn it. She waits intently. <laughs> Did you say you are very small? <laughs> Come on, don't be silly. That's not a proper deduction. Okay, so if I put points into composure, we can come back and try again. What is it's romance? It's the type of book where there's a rich lady and she has to choose between the good man and the bad man. <laughs> She's not wrong, to be fair. And inevitably, the rich lady loves the bad man originally until the good man... And the good man can't have money. I mean, maybe the good man has money in some of the Bronte novels and stuff, but typically I feel like... the the good man shouldn't have money because the rich woman has to realize that money's not important and love and richness of character is what makes a relationship work. Or there could be a story about a poor lady getting a rich man. It's about man and lady business, sir. <laughs> uh, what about where everyone's poor? That's really not a proper romance story. That's more like everyday life. Poor people are boring. <laughs> Oh, God. Sometimes you have to write about real life things. Not in romance books, sir. These are about nice and pretty people, and everyone is happy in the end. Boo. What about a poor man getting a rich it lady? It happens, but usually the guy gets rich in the process. Or should actually be rich himself, but has lost his family property unjustly. Like during the revolution or something. I see. Those are unhappy books for most of the pages. People sad about what they have lost, but then it all turns out just fine in the end. These are not very common. You can't have a choice between bad and bad. Nobody wants to read a story like that. What if it's written really oh, well? Maybe then it's fine. Maybe if the lady then decides not to pick either because she doesn't need a bad man. Yes, that would be interesting. That's a good shout in that. I like this kid. What about a book where the man and lady business doesn't work out at all? I haven't read many of those. Maybe you should ask mum. Maybe I will. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she can help out. Anything else you're curious about? Maybe some of our other books? Who are the... For what it's worth, by the way, rom-com... I don't read romantic novels. <clears throat> Very little interest. But I do like a rom-com, a film. And rom-coms where the people don't end up together is, like, my favourite genre of rom-com. For example, um, Jesse and Celeste Off Forever, which is a lovely film with... Andy Samberg and the last who plays Karen on The Office. Oh, what is her name? That's going to really annoy me. She's a great actress as well. She plays Karen Filibelli. <laughs> She's very exotic. Her dad was a GI. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, kings and queens and generals of old, or artists and writers, or musicians, those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. She scratches her cold red and cheek, then continues. I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. There's also a film called... Uh, that, 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 the one I mentioned is like a fairly typical nice little rom-com. There's one called uh, Columbus, which I'd really, really recommend. That it's more about what moves you as an individual and your passions in life and stuff like that. Um... And they kind of have what feels like it's going to be a relationship. And again, you know, it's just not what life has in mind. 
But it does make the famous people more famous. Famous people sound like a bunch of dogs. Kenneth's expression remains ever so helpful, but she doesn't say anything. Okay, we're not going with that's mean. Okay. See ya, Nat. Okay, well. Um, oh, I have map. Oh, so I need to get a copy of the city map and then I can... Oh, it's... Oh, okay, I've got it. These are all my, my little... My little challenges. Um, that I've, The white checks. Yeah. Those on white dots... Those on white are available to try now. But they're all on... What? Eh? Eh? Whatever. Um... Okay. Well, let's go check out this bloody body, but we'll do that in the next video. So, that is Disco Elysium. It is <clears throat> very clearly very different than anything, maybe anything I've ever played in my entire life, actually. Um, definitely different than anything we've played on the channel. It is, however, fucking hilarious. <laughs> I'm very excited to play more of it. It's got a really interesting idea. Um... Yeah, I'm pretty excited to carry on. So the next video, we'll go check out the body and we'll we'll go from there. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you lovely folks very soon. Cheers, much love as always. Bye-bye.